Hi and welcome to another one of the Tech Geeks uh, videos. This one's a how to, how to set up an AI port. I had set up a bit of time aside to do this because I thought it was actually going to be quite complicated. Um, but I found it, it's really super easy. Now there are a few things obviously we need to get right. Um, I've already got my uh, UNVR set up. I've already got my Unify Protect stuff set up inside here. Um, and I actually have a TP-Link camera we're going to test this on that supports ONVIV, O-N-V-I-F, which is an open standard um, for um, communication that uh, video cameras or CCTV cameras can use that Ubiquiti now open support for uh, in their console. We're also going to try and add some AI features to um, some Ubiquiti G5 cameras that don't support the AI side of things already as well. And that's another thing that we're going to do to, to see how that um, all works out. So really all I've done is literally provided PoE power to my um, AI port and put it in the same VLAN because I have a number of VLANs, but in the same network as my UNVR. So let's have a little look around the screen um, and get ourselves a little bit more orientated. Now, I want to just talk about very quickly the difference between the events notification, which we'll see in a minute, and AI events. So we already have person, motion, um, vehicle, um, and uh, animal. We already have that set. When we add an AI port, what we actually do is we add categories with inside there. So now for maybe for a vehicle, we can do license plate number recognition. We can do color of the vehicle, the type of the vehicle. When we talk about a person at the moment, we have uh, face. So we can start identifying faces of people and not just saying that's a person. So we actually start to be able to create and delve in a little bit further with the information that we can get. And then we can sort on it, which I'll show you in a little bit in a moment. So uh, first thing that I want us to just be aware of, you need to go into system. And if you want to do license plate recognition, then we do need to have at least have this box turned on. It's not turned on by default. So if you don't have that turned on, then you'll wonder why your um, license plate recognition is not actually working. Then we can actually go and see a list of all of our devices. Um, I've got a number of cameras here spread around the property. Um, and you can see here my AI port is plugged in. It's in the same IP range. Now there is an output, um, a output on that. There is a um, PoE out if you wanted to connect the camera directly to it. But in the current version that I'm um, running, let's just remind ourselves uh, down um, here, I'm running, running Protect 5.3.41. And in this version, um, the uh, AI port can support either one OnVIV camera, um, i.e. a third party camera, or it can support up to five Ubiquiti cameras. And it will depend again on the type of camera that you've got. If it's a 4K, I think it might only be one or two. We'll have a look in a moment. And if it's 2K or below, then there's an extra multiple of it, but it'll become evident as we um, go along. So now that it's in place, all I'm gonna do is click to adopt. And that literally was it. It adopted that quickly when I uh, did it. And as you can see here, we've now got this option to uh, pair. So let's take our first um, device. It's gonna give us a list of all the devices we can pair with. Now, at this current stage, if I have an OnViv camera in here, that OnViv camera, I can only do recording of continuous recording. It doesn't do motion detection or anything else like that. So the first thing that the AI port is gonna add, if I'm gonna use and uh, connect this with an OnViv camera, is gonna allow me to do motion um, detection, as well as obviously now the AI events, um, but I don't have to continually record. So I'm just gonna pair it with this and uh, save it. What you'll see on the screen is once it's actually done, we get this little AI uh, symbol next to it. And now if I come across uh, to here, I can actually uh, make some changes to um, the settings. I don't need to change anything in this bit um, because this is just sort of the names. But in the recording, this is where it becomes more interesting because at the moment it was set as continuous. I can now set this to record as events only. Uh, what happens, how, do, how much, what triggers it, which we had sort of before as you're normal if you're used to finding a way around Unify and Protect. And then here, seconds to record before and after the event, which are great if you want to see what actually happened, somebody walking onto the property before they were recognized. You can see here now, obviously, we've got animal, face, person, and vehicle. Those are our standard features along with the motion. Um, but we will see that we actually get more information inside there. And you can obviously turn off the face if you didn't want to have that with inside um, these detections. So that is really, uh, you can change some of the quality settings in here, although some of this was already part of the camera with the OnViv support. 
So I'm now just going to apply that setting um, to uh, the camera. I had to move that very slightly. And then what we'll do is we'll actually have a look um, and uh, see now anything else of more information that we're going to be able to get back from that device now that we've actually turned on um, AI events as well as um, motion detection. Okay, so what I've done is I have just basically chosen find anything over um, here. And then I've just chosen the camera that I was interested in. Um, and we're presented with some options in here. We've got, um, we can see anything. We can not choose not to just have smart detections and literally have all the other bits and pieces um, shown on here as well. Um, I'm going to use smart detection so you can see a little bit more of, of what I'm talking about. We have this heat map up here. So it, it can be, for instance, I might just say I was interested in what happened in that corner. Um, and you can see that that car passed over that area. So if you've got the camera that covers a larger area, you can just see events and, and hone down um, just in that way. What you can do though, which is really interesting, is we obviously can choose person um, and it will just show us the ones that identified as a person. It shows us the area of the camera they traveled through. But we can do on here and detect face um, if we wanted to just pick out images that actually had real faces on it. Um, and obviously we could do the same here for um, vehicle. Um, and we can then uh, drill down a little bit more to find useful information in here and see what it was actually categorized as. Now, when I had this running on here, I haven't got license plate uh, detection running. So I'll show that on one of the other cameras. But you can see actually in here, we're actually starting to find um, some more useful information. So no truck was seen in there, but did it have a sedan or we could choose black. So now we're actually getting those true AI features um, in there. So let's now broaden that out. I've obviously shown you what can happen if we've done this with an OnViv camera. I'm now actually going to um, bring this over and uh, add it to a few of the other cameras on the property. Um, so let's just set that up and I'll show you how I join all of those together. So it's very simple. We just come back again to our main devices menu um, from over here and find our AI port and we can now choose manage. So what I can now just do is literally take away um, the uh, OnViv camera I want, and maybe I want to now check front door. Um, I want to have uh, my PTZ, um, and uh, let me just have a little look what else, maybe I'm going to have my front left. I can't go any more than this, um, and let's have a little look. We can see over here, once we've saved this, the current status in um, what's going on. So we can see I've got one 4K camera, um, which then allowed us to drop down to just having two 2K and one um, HD. So it will depend on the number of the um, pixels of the camera um, to what it can actually support. I think it can do four 2K cameras, sorry, two 4K cameras, maybe four 2K cameras and a whole bunch more of the HD. Um, but obviously you can put a number of these together to cover what you want. So now that's actually gonna be collecting events for us across all of those cameras. So if we do a similar type of thing, and let's go and find um, some um, more information from um, the Find Anything screen. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to collect a little bit more information together. So I've now just gone into Find Every Anything here and selected the four cameras that I've added the AI features to. I've just uh, unselected here the one for uh, the TP-Link um, so because I've disconnected from that and I want to show you what's um, in here. Now obviously this is live, so. Um, I'm having to just filter out some of the content that you can um, see here. Um, but let's just choose vehicle. So simple now, just clicked on that and just chosen vehicle. That's what we'd get normal as normal motion detection. We've detected it being an actual vehicle. But the great thing now is we can actually drill this down even further. So maybe like we want to see, uh, was it just trucks? So now we can see just the trucks that were coming in. How about we uh, do just license plate detected? Um, and um, let's untick uh, trucks. So now we've got these uh, two vehicles and actually we can see in the top here, um, we can see the registration number of that vehicle. Um, you do have some options here to go directly to vehicle um, and you can just choose license plates. Um, and again, it will show you all of the ones and drill in a little bit further to these to see the imagery it used to actually get those license plates and the number um, that it found. Um, so you will actually find that that's quite a useful way of doing things. Let's just come back to our four selected um, cameras. We can obviously then go um, away from here if we want to and onto a person. This is going to show us all of the people that have been detected across those four cameras. 
Um, obviously, some of those are blurred out for obvious reasons. We can actually go to face detection if we wanted to. And that's one of those AI events that's now happening uh, as a deeper level. Um, and you can see now it pulls out uh, a little bit more of the face recognition. I'm not going to show you on some of the, the more personal cameras, but it gives you an idea of what you can drill out of there. Obviously, the normal detections that we get are things like packages. Um, that's not across any of these cameras that are um, here because it's normally based on the doorbells. Um, if door access was done and you've got Unify Protect running, um, then you would see uh, something happening there. We don't have the uh, option at the moment to uh, enable AI events um, on our um, sorry, Unify Access devices, uh, but I'm sure that will be coming soon. So that was really a very quick way of showing you what you get in here. That ability now with those AI events and with the using the AI port to drill in deeper and further, be able to select what you're wanting to do, grab out that number plate recognition if you want. Do remember that you need to turn on number plate recognition in the settings if you want that to actually um, work as well. Hopefully that gives you a real simple idea of some of the features that are added when you use the AI port. Uh, really simple to add, like we said, uh, in here once it's adopted. Um, and then we can choose which um, cameras. We can move those around if you want to by multiple AI ports to be able to do multiple cameras um, more than you have here. And you can see the AI features are enabled because it shows it next to it. It gives us continuous recording. Um, sorry, it gives us motion and AI events for um, OnViv cameras as well, which is a great feature to have. So hopefully that's been useful. Head on over to our YouTube channel. Plenty more box openings on network firewall wireless devices, plenty more how-to guides, um, deep dives on how to set up um, Unify Protect and Unify Access and things like that, for example. So hopefully you do that, find that useful. Subscribe and stay up to date.